Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's a few minutes till five o'clock here in beautiful Florida, in the panhandle of Florida, near Pensacola, a little tad north of Navarre Beach, but it's cold today. Ooh, a little chilly today, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, but it's time for the live stream. Questions and answers on the K-1 visa. Now, I'm gonna, hopefully everybody's doing well. And uh, at your, hi, at your, hello, good to see you. Thanks for checking in, Miguel. Hola, Miguel. How was everybody? Jacob, hi, Jacob. Luke, hi, Luke. How did, everybody doing well out there? Today, here in Florida, is a little cold. Edward, good to see you. And uh, I hope you're ready with all your questions. Jadidia, saluda, gracias, muchas gracias. Como estas? Hoy bien, si? Hoy frío, oof. Magley, hi, hi Magley, how are you? Jacob, always seem to miss a lot of live streams. For all my channels I follow, well, we don't want you to miss any live any live streams, okay? Hey, Susie, how are you? Yeah, we don't want you to miss a live stream, okay? It's good. it's important information. We want to see you get your K one visa and get with your beneficiary or your sponsor and get them here in the USA. I'm doing well, Magley. Doing good. Ah, cool. Actually, I have no questions for now. You covered everything already. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that because you know if you if you if you don't have any questions, that's good because that means that you know we've we've accomplished something to help you get through this scary process with immigration. And Jacob, my beneficiary, is in for a real treat. From Philippines to Colorado. Now, I love Colorado, Jacob. I've been to Colorado. Uh, I was in Durango, Colorado. Uh, and uh, I remember being, I remember I went to the college there. I think it was called Fort Lewis. And, uh, oh, it was uh, a really, really high altitude. And uh, I remember I was always sleepy. I was, I was cold and sleepy in Durango. And then I got in the car and I drove from Durango to Farmington in New Mexico, because I believe that's where my hotel was in Farmington. Edward Tubman from Liberia. Hey, we just did a video for you guys in Liberia. Okay. And uh, the embassy is Monrovia. The US embassy in Liberia is in Monrovia. Yeah, the altitude kills a lot of people. Well, I, it was tough, I tell you. I mean, I'm you know I'm used to being at sea level, and uh, when I go to Colombia, Bogota, Colombia, I go from sea level to 8,600 feet above sea level, and it takes me a couple of days to get used to it. Uh, Miguel has a question: Why doesn't USCIS use premium processing for K-1 visas, Diego? Well, let's let's put let's put it this way. You're in a K-1 visa process, okay, and everybody needs to be on a level playing field where nobody is jumping the line. Because if people, imagine you go to Disney World and you're waiting to go and ride on one of the rides at Disney World and then somebody cuts in front of you because they paid a little bit more to get the ticket. You know, that's, I understand your point of view. And uh, it, USCIS want to make sure everybody stays calm and happy, doesn't get into anger mode because somebody cut in front of them. It's bad enough that, you know, that somebody's K-1 visa might get adjudicated uh, first because it's a smaller package of information and easier to adjudicate. And uh, so they jump in front of somebody who may have, a, 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 you know, a large K-1 visa. My K-1 visa package is like four books full of stuff. So it might take them a while to scan everything and get it to, to the National Visa Center. You know, who knows? I might get an RFE. But you but USCIS won't use premium processing for K-1 visas because they want to keep everybody on a level playing field without jumping the line, basically. Because, you know, 
it's one thing to to get premium processing for a work visa. You know, if you want to come here as to work in the United States on a work visa, um, there's no there's you know there's no line to get in front of really. You know, depends on if you're a doctor, an engineer, a nurse, whatever it is you're gonna do. Um, there's no line to jump. But with a K-1 visa, there's a line, and people are very eager to get in that line and get their fiance in the United States. So they're gonna so immigration's not gonna give anybody uh, an unfair advantage by paying more money. Basically, it's the reason. You know, they're just trying to keep everybody happy. It's just tough, it's a tough thing to do. You know, there's lots of angry birds out there, people just really angry with immigration right now because it's taken so long to process a visa. You know, the uh, the first time I went through the K-1 visa process back in 2015 and 16, it took six months. I put I filed the package and within six months, I was on, the, you know, it was all getting wrapped up. Different story now. Jadidia uh, filed in March 2022, still waiting. Okay, March 2022, March 2023, so 13, 12, 13. You, so next month, next month, you should be hearing from immigration. Okay, guys? Jadidia, you should hear next month. Miguel, thank you. No, Diego, no problem. Not a problem. Arthur M., any updates on March? Yeah, March processing is going on right now. Well, actually, not today, probably. It's it's uh, it's uh, Resurrection Sunday. I'm sure immigration took the day off today. But tomorrow, they're going to be back processing March K1 March 2022 K1 visas are going to get are going to be processed January February March and we got we, we mustn't forget about the folks back in September October November December who are still maybe sitting on the shelf there's a few not many and we got we got to get those guys and pull them over the finish line uh, as well but you know not every visa is the same okay uh, Jacob so one of my questions is that we used we use Rapid Visa for them to go put our packet together correctly. Okay. But I got into my own head. One, I've never met any of his family because his sister wants to, to use it against him. Do I have to meet his estranged sister? No. You don't have to meet his sister. Not at all. Or, you know, you it's not, it's not a mandatory requirement for a K-1 visa that you go meet somebody else's brother or sister. But it is important that immigration have confidence in you that your relationship is real with your fiance and you can get photos and pictures with friends and it doesn't have to be family members. Not everybody in, in all families get along, you know, that's just, that's just human nature. You know, not everybody gets along in all families. So you don't have to meet his estranged sister. No, not, not necessary. Not necessary. You're good. Everybody. And uh, Magley, is it a problem if my fiance didn't put his documents proving he can financially support me once I'm there in the I-129F package? Oh, no, no. It's, I recommend including tax returns, tax transcripts, et cetera, in the K-1 visa package at the very beginning when you mail it to the Dallas lockbox. I recommend including it, but if you didn't include it, it's okay. Make sure you bring it to the embassy face-to-face -face interview. You're going to need the, the financial documents. You're going to need the tax returns, W-2s, 1099s, uh, transcripts, and the very important USCIS Form I-134, signed and dated by your sponsor and then Mr. or Miss Beneficiary that needs to be in your hand with all those financial documents for the face-to-face -face interview with that scary immigration officer, okay? Make sure you got it for the embassy interview, but don't worry if you didn't include it in the K-1 visa. It's not going to be a problem. It's all good. All right, Magley, so don't worry, worry about that. Jacob says, yeah, his parents are dead, and his sister feels if she can tell the family he is gay, that she gets him all the family home. No, nah, don't. If you feel like there's going to be drama in the family, don't go visit that particular part of the family. Avoid the drama and enjoy the process. 
The mission is to get with your uh, loved one, get married in the USA. And if there's family members in there that are stirring the pot, just avoid them. Again, you know, avoid the drama. By October, play, question from play. By October, how long will be the waiting time? Well, by October, that will be the beginning of fiscal year 2024 for USCIS. And in fiscal year 2024, the director of USCIS has said in letters and emails that she wants the processing time down to six months. My prediction is it will be seven to eight months, okay? But she may have stuff up her sleeve I don't know about. But by, if you file your K-1 visa in October of 2023, the wait time, processing time, adjudication time should be six to eight months. And then you got to wait for the embassy interview. I don't know how the embassies are going to be in October, but, but USCIS is definitely going to be a lot faster. No problem, Magley. You're welcome. Jacob, so, so I know they ask if the beneficiary has family in the States. How does it work if one of those members are in the U.S. illegally? Well, <laughs> as long as your K-1 visa is legal and you're doing everything the right way legally, that subject does not have to come up unless it comes up by the immigration officer. If the immigration officer turns around to you and says, do you have anybody illegal in the family in the U.S.? Okay, then you explain what you just said here. But if it doesn't come up as a question, it's irrelevant because you're doing things the right way by doing it legally, okay? So it's not going to hurt your visa as long as you follow the rules. As long as your beneficiary doesn't sneak in the country illegally, you're good to go. No worries. You're good. Okay? So, so Jacob, just relax, all right? Don't, don't overthink it. Quico Food War. Hello, Diego. Thumbs up for the good job if the petitioner can fully sponsor financially, but the beneficiary is currently unemployed. Can it affect him or her during the interview? No. This is, immigration do not care if your beneficiary has a job or doesn't have a job. Now, it helps if he or she has a job because it shows that this person, you know, when they come to the United States, may have some kind of skills that they want to put to use here in the USA. Like Karina, for example, is a, has a degree, uh, she's, a tax, she's a tax accountant and she's uh, a master cake designer. And she, when, we put our US, when we put our K-1 visa package together, we included in the K-1 visa package her college credentials and her plans when she gets to the USA that she wants to become a cake designer here and open up a store. But that's here. You know, immigration really, honestly, they don't care if your beneficiary has a job or doesn't have a job. But it does help uh, if they have particular skills. You know, USCIS are not going to block your visa because uh, your beneficiary doesn't work or is unemployed. No, it's not going to stop you. What they want to see is, do you, Mr. Sponsor, are you making the, uh, the income that's required to support her when she gets here? So relax. You're good. Uh, Play has a question. What about for, what about for those who filed before October? Will they have to still present the waiting time, or will it be shorter? Well, I, it's speeding up. It is speeding up. When I filed the K one visa back a year ago, this month, you know, I was looking at a twelve month, and then it went to fourteen months, and then it went to fifteen months, and then sixteen and a half months. But now it's back down to 12 to 13 months, to 14 months. So it went, when, when I first applied for the K-1 visa, it was a long lead time. But now the lead time has been cut uh, by three months, 12, 13, uh, by about three months. So, you know, it's hard to say. It's, it, it's hard to say. But the average processing time is going from 14 months to 13 months. And I figure in the next two or three months, It'll be down to a year or 11 months. So it's speeding up, okay? So if you filed a year ago or, you you know, you just got to wait it out. Be patient. Be patient. Wait it out. Uh, Jacob Myers, do you out that person? Uh, 
do you out the person? That's, you know, it's what well, it's your decision, what you want to do. I can't make that call. You know, I personally do not agree with people sneaking in our country illegally. It's not, it, it's just jump, everybody's, you know, jumping the line and trying to cut in front of you who's doing it the right way. You're following the law, but it's, you know, I would say I would not stick my nose into anything like that at all. Protect your beneficiary, get her to the USA, get married, get your green card in your hand, and then make decisions on that. But for right now, stay stay your nose out of it. My opinion. You know? Kelly, hello, Diego. How many conversations per month do you recommend providing for proof of relationship? We have been together for almost two years and plan to meet hopefully within the next year. I would say screenshot or print to WhatsApp or Yahoo Messenger or whatever communication device you have. Print two a week, so that's eight a month. Eight a month is good. So eight, eight per month. I submitted like, <laughs> I overloaded. I sent probably a thousand, a thousand chats in WhatsApp. Okay, immigration is going to have a, a heart attack when they see it. When they next month or whenever they get to our package, they're going to go, "Oh no, oh my goodness!" But you know that was my decision. I probably went overboard a little bit, but that's okay. I went overboard. No big deal. Jacob, which countries seem to have the slowest processing embassies? Well, that would be the Philippines, Mexico. Uh, those are the two busiest. Um, you know, that's, they're the busiest embassies. The Philippines is probably the slowest and, uh, the busiest month for the U S embassy in Manila, Philippines is May. For some reason, it seems to be May. May is the hottest time of the year in the Philippines. And it is also the slowest time for processing visas. And next month is May. So I don't know, it might be a slow month next year. That's bad news for me. No, it's not bad news. You're going to get your visa. You get it. You get it done. You know, if I if I get if I have to wait and wait and wait and wait, I'm just going to get on a plane. What when I get the NOA2 letter, when I get Karina's NOA2 letter, hopefully it's approved without any RFEs, but you know, let's assume it's approved. I'm just going to wait a couple of weeks and then I'm going to fly to Colombia and hang out down there. So we're not separated, but I'm lucky I can do that. You know, I'm retired military. So, you know, yeah, my, I, I have, I can do that, but, you know, try to try to spend as much time with your fiance as you can. Uh, Magley, I think we're all a bunch of impatient overthinkers. We want this to work out so much. Positive vibes only, we're all gonna make it. Magley, you're right. Absolutely, overthinking. You know, like I lay, I lay in bed and go, oh man, did I forget to do this? Uh, oh man, did I forget to do that? Uh, oh, you know, and then I wake up and I'm like, come on, man, relax. Come on, Diego, chill out, man, chill out. Wait it out. Once you mail that K-1 visa package, it's out of your hands. Forget about it. And then wait for your NOA-2 letter or your RFE. That's all you can do. And hopefully it's not an RFE. And if it is, oh, well, work the RFE, get it done, and you're done. And then you get your, then the next thing to do is to get your visa interview scheduled at the embassy. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're all impatient. <laughs> and that's the, the secret to success is to relax and don't overthink. Don't overthink the visa. You know, some people email me, ah, oh, Diego. I think I forgot to uh, to sign my uh, form I-129F. Uh, well, if you didn't sign it, immigration is going to send it back to you, and you're going to have to redo it. But if you didn't get it back, if they didn't send it back to you, there's a good chance you did sign it, and you're good to go. Quico, awesome, Diego. Thank you, Quico. Jacob, LOL, that's like when I messaged in one of your videos before, Flights are $1,600 to $2,000, yeah. 
Uh, it's expensive flying to the Philippines. I, I, I know that. The cheapest flight, I was thinking about taking Karina there on a vacation once we get all this green card stuff figured out. And it's like two grand, 1800 to two grand for one person to fly round trip to the Philippines. That's crazy. Woo, it's a lot of money. I mean, Jacob, I'm in my own head every time, watch the videos that I feel like I forgot something. Uh, you, yeah, I, you're good, okay? Keep it positive, you know? And at your, yeah, I feel the same like I forgot something. Yeah, it's normal. It's normal, you know? I think to myself sometimes, you know, I should have included this in my K-1 visa package. Ooh, why didn't I put that in there? You know, and, and also in the chat, in the chat logs, I, you know, when I'm chatting with Karina, I said, hey, my, my, I call her my wife, my esposa. I gave her my last name in a few message, in a few uh, chats. And I went, oh, you idiot. You know, now, now immigration is going to think we're married because I gave her, because I'm calling her my wife in, in the chat log. So that's a big mistake. People are telling me, oh, they're going to deny your visa. Well, that's, that's the culture in Latin America, you know. That's the culture in Latin America to call your primate to your wife. It's just the way it, it's just the, the, the way it is. So, you know, what I did to compensate for that stupid error, if it is, because I'm overthinking this whole visa thing, is to I, I got letters of affidavit from family members to say, well, I'm single, I can marry Karina, I'm legally single. And uh, Karina got affidavits from her friends that says that she's single. So that's so we got those letters ready in case immigration have a question about it. But, you know, it's just overthinking, overthinking the process. Magley, I, I'm afraid my fiance forgot to sign the form, knowing full well he did because he did it in front of me. <laughs> yeah, make sure he signs the form. Jacob, my biggest is if I put enough pictures and stuff. Okay. If you put one photo in there, that's not enough. If you put five or more in there with family and friends, you're good to go. You don't want to submit one or two photos with selfies. Immigration don't want to see selfies. If you're the, you know, immigration don't care about selfies. They want to see you, Mr. Sponsor, with your beneficiary and her friends and her family, except for unless parts of the family are a little crazy and you don't want to hang out with them, then don't go visit them. But you got to get pictures with family and friends. Immigration will get the selfies and okay, okay, but they're gonna really look and they're gonna and it's gonna give you K one visa package a lot of strength and a lot of uh, uh, validity if you have pictures with family and friends. Nikel Moda, if people filed in January 2023 and got NOA one, will USCIS process those faster? Because I read somewhere they will be working on new case files from this year. USCIS are working cases much quicker than they were six months ago. Six months ago, uh, I was I was calculating that they would look at my that, that I would get my NOA two letter in September October of this year. Six months ago. Now, I think I'm going to get my NOA2 letter next month or in May. So that's shaved like three or four months off of the processing time. So things are speeding up, definitely. Uh, what if we didn't, Jacob, Danny, hello. Hey, Danny, how are you? Jacob, what if we didn't spend too much time with the friends because we spent like one night or a few nights with friends? That's okay. It doesn't matter if you spent you, you didn't go there to spend time with her friends. You spent you went there to be with her, not with her friends. But it's it's good to be one time or twice with the friends and get pictures with the friends. The friends know and the family know you guys are engaged to get married and going to get married within 90 days when you get to the USA, right? Yeah. Okay. And you got photos with those people, right? Okay. You're good to go. No problem. Jacobs, uh, I mainly watch for when you guys get your NOA 2 because we filed April 19th. Okay. Well, when we get our NOA 2 letter, I'll make a, I'll do a live stream. I'll just go, I'll do a live stream and go live 
at five, you know, I get the mail in the morning at 5 p.m. that day. I get the NOA 2 letter. I'll do a live stream and I'll show it and say, here it is. And then that is the day that I'm going to figure out how many days it took. Right now, I couldn't care less how many days it takes. I don't count days. I count months. I'm in month number 12. NOA 1, April 18th, 2022. Month number 12. I don't count days. But I will calculate how many days it took once I get the NOA 2 letter, and I'll go. I'll do a live stream. They mail the NOA 2 letter to your house in a letter. They mail it to you. Okay. You gotta have, you gotta have a hard copy of the NOA 2 letter because there's a barcode on there, and you have to bring that NOA 2 letter or send it to your beneficiary because she will bring she will have to bring that NOA2 letter to her face-to-face -face visa interview because that is a piece of gold parchment that says your visa has been approved. It's gold dust. And when and you when you get it, you lock it up in your safe and then you lock your house and and you protect that document with your life because that is the key. That is the key for your beneficiary to get her green card when she gets to the United States because you're going to get a copy of the NOA2 letter and put it with your adjustment of status paperwork <clears throat> so the immigration officer can, can see that you have an approved visa. And you're going to bring it to the visa interview. You got you understand that? You got it? Uh, Jacob, my beneficiary is way calmer than me than over this whole thing. Well... Yes, Karina is, is more calmer than I am, too. She's relaxed. You know, I told her, hey, I, I put your name in. I, 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 I said you're my wife in our message chats when you're not my wife. You're my fiance. You're my prometida. But I put in there, you're my sweet wife. And she's relaxed. And she's like, OK, so what? That's the way things that's the way we that's the way things roll in South America and the embassy in South America the U.S. Embassy in South America, the, the folks down there know that. So I'm just said, okay, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. Uh, G. Mushiana, can you find out how long it takes from getting an OA2 letter and getting an interview on average for India? Now, the K-1 visas are, are processed at the uh, U.S. Embassy, U.S. Consulate in Mumbai. Every single K-1 visa goes through the Mumbai consulate and the wait time could be two months it could be four months it could be six months it depends on the time of the year and how busy the embassy folks are remember the philippines india uh nigeria those those are the top three busiest embassies in the world so it's going to and mexico also it's going to take a little bit of time uh to get your embassy interview scheduled but if you want, you can get on a plane and fly to India and uh, hang out with your fiance until you get it all done. India, beautiful India. I love India. I love India. I've never been there. My dad has been to India. They've got the Taj Mahal. Oh, what a beautiful place. Go hang out with your fiance when you get the NOA2 letter. If you can, you don't want to, you know, give up. You don't want your income to drop because you're not working. You know, but if you can go on a vacation, that'll be good. Jacob Myers, all those countries love the USA. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think there's too many countries that don't like the USA. You know, maybe I don't think I think North Korea isn't too friendly. They don't like us very much. Uh, Iran, the, but it's the governments that don't like us, not the people. I'm sure the, the, the people, the citizens of North Korea would be very happy and quite agreeable and very friendly towards Americans if they were given the opportunity to meet Americans. But they're not even allowed to talk to Americans. They can't even leave their border. They don't even have Internet. So, you know, the number of K-1 visas getting adjudicated for North Korea is zero. Zero. None. Zero. And that's unfortunate because the North Korean people are good people. And then, they might, you know, a lot of those folks say they escape into South Korea. And then they got to worry about their families. You know, it's, it's go the governments are the problem, not the people. 
Uh, Arthur Finosky. Diego, if my friend didn't state she was engaged to her American fiance when she was twice refused a visitor's visa, will that hurt her K-1 visa chances? She filed in April 2022. No. If you get denied a, a, a B-1, B-2 tourist visa, that has got absolutely no bearing on a K-1 visa. They're two separate entities. Okay? A tourist visa, a B-1 tourist visa, it, like in, let's go with Colombia, for example. If Karina filed to come to the United States as a tourist, it would take probably 500 days just to get a face-to-face -face interview with the, in, with the counselor. And then probably he will probably say no and deny her visa. Not, you know, it's crazy. The, yeah, the, I'm not, I don't know. It's crazy why so many tourist visas get denied. More tourist, tourist visas get denied than any other country in the world. Like our friends in Colombia, in Bogota, our friends in Bogota, they waited 540-something days for a K-1 visa, okay? And he got, he got denied. And this guy's a business owner. He's an entrepreneur. He's a pastor of a church. And they denied him a K-1. Uh, they denied him his tourist visa. Apparently, they didn't want his money. So he went on vacation to Brazil. You know, it's it's crazy, but it won't affect the K-1 visa at all. Not at all. Not at all. If you're qualified for the K-1 visa or if your friend's qualified for the K-1 visa, he or she will get it. So your friend will get the, the It won't affect the K-1 visa. Being denied for a tourist visa, it happens around the whole world. It's costing the United States billions of dollars in tourist revenue. It's insane. Ah, uh, let's see here. Jacob, just some of the videos. I hear someplace it was like 50 or 100 and 150, but when you did Philippines, it was like over 2K. 2K? I'm not sure. I, I do not fully understand the question, Jacob. 2K. Mariam, hello, Diego. If my K-1 application was received on March 13th, when do you think I'll get my NOA too? Well, I would say more. Uh, April, this if if it was March thirteenth of twenty twenty two, then this this month or next month you're going to be hearing from USCIS. <clears throat> so this month or next month, uh, Jacob, don't they worry with tourist visas of overstaying? Yeah, oh, yeah, the U.S. Embassy folks. Okay, they don't trust anybody. Get, who, when they get when they issue a tourist visa, they don't even trust the person they issue the tourist visa to, because quite a few people come to the USA on a tourist visa and then they don't go back home, or they marry their fiance, uh, or they just overstay. It's not a good idea to overstay on your visa. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not good. It hurts. It hurts the person in the future. If you overstay on a tourist visa, that's a that's a big no-no on a K-1 visa. They'll look at it. Doesn't necessarily mean they'll deny the visa, but they'll definitely look at it. And uh, if the if the if the immigration officer is having a bad hair day that day, he could deny the K-1 visa. <clears throat> oh, Mariam, March March thirteenth, twenty twenty-three was your NOA one letter. Okay, so April, March, I would say Fe February of 2024. By February of 2024, you'll hear something on your NOA 2 letter because things are speeding up. If you, you know, that tomorrow they're going to be processing more and more K-1 visas for March of 2022 and maybe even April. I don't know. That's a guess, but it's a possibility. Nathalie Palacios, nervous. Don't be nervous. Just relax. There's a, there are there are two outcomes: approval or not approval. And 87% of all K-1 visas as of today, 87% are getting approved. So there's very few that are getting denied. Not there's not a bunch. Okay, there's not. A bunch. 
And the folks that are getting denied are making stupid mistakes, like they haven't met their fiance face to face within two years. If you don't meet your face, if you don't meet your beneficiary face to face within two years prior to submitting the visa, you get denied. Um, you know, or there's rampant fraud in the paperwork. Okay, you know, somebody stated that they have never uh, been to the United States before. So USCIS punches the, the, the passport number of the beneficiary into their computer database, and it pops up that they've been in the United States before. That's a blatant lie. Okay, boom, visa denied. Never lie to immigration and be accurate in your paperwork processing so they don't get refused. There's a difference between a visa refusal, which means you made a mistake and you got to fix it, which is an RFE, and a visa denial, which is, boom, we ain't letting you in the country. Uh, Jacob says, with RFE, you don't get put back in the line, right? There's no, there's no, it just slows you down a little bit. You don't get, you, you're in a different line. You go from the, the adjudication line, you go to the RFE line. You don't go to the back of the line. You're in the RFE line, which means you've got to wait four to six weeks for, for them to, to look at it and get it processed. <clears throat> so, no, you don't have to go. To the, you don't go to the back of the line. Not at all. James McLean, Diego, I'm a U.S. citizen and want to file a K-1. My question is about the income requirement. At what point in the K-1 visa process will I be required to submit proof of income and tax returns? At the face-to-face -face visa interview at the embassy. At the face-to-face -face visa interview at the embassy, James, is when you submit your financial documents. So, you know, take, for example, for myself. In 2021, I made, you know, I made sufficient income. Um, in 2022, I lived in Colombia for 10 months with Karina. I didn't want to be separated from her. So my income went down. So now I just filed my 2022 K, my 2022 taxes. So, you know, now I have to be ready with a letter of explanation why my income went down. Well, I got all the evidence that I was in Colombia, the receipts from the, you know, paying the rent, buying food, going to the movies, going on trips. We took trips. I kept all the evidence. So I have it. So Karina can tell the immigration officer, well, Diego was living with me for 10 months and here's the evidence. That's why his income went down. And then she will present the I-134 and the tax return and the 1099s. And if, you know, so at the at the face-to-face -face, uh, visa interviews, when you have to show it. Okay, James, you got it? Nathalie, if, if, if it's refusal, is it possible to reapply? If you get denied a K-1 visa, they will explain the reason why the visa was denied, and then you can reapply as long as it, was, as long as it wasn't any fraud involved in the process. If there's any fraud in there, you're trying to, to deceive U.S. immigration, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult to get a, a visa to enter this country. But if you just, you know, didn't get approved because you didn't meet the income requirements that, or, you know, or you didn't meet face-to-face -face in the two-year requirement, you made a mistake like that, then meet face-to-face -face and then reapply. And pay another whatever. It's five hundred and thirty-five dollars right now, but that price can go up. I think it's going to go up next month. Uh, so yeah, you can reapply as long as there's no fraud involved in the visa package. Jacob, if 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 I have my last three years tax scripts, do I need to hunt down all my W twos and all my other money earned? No. If you have your tax transcripts, you don't need your W twos. No. But I recommend you bring them. You don't need them. The tax transcript is sufficient. It's a sufficient. And you don't need to notarize the tax transcript either. doesn't need to be notarized. It is an official government document. So you're good to go with the tax transcripts. But I, I'm bringing my W. I got 1099s, not W-2s. I'm bringing mine just because. Amanda Eldekeo. Hi, Diego. I submitted my fiancé K-1 visa August 11th, 2022. When do you guesstimate that I might hear back? I would say uh, July or August of 2023, by this summer, if not sooner. Things are speeding up. So by the summer, July, August. 
Uh, Mary Ann, is it true that we have to submit the last three years of tax returns? I just got a job, so I might just file 2023 taxes. When you uh, when you go to the face-to-face -face visa, when you go to your interview at the embassy, you only need the last tax return that you filed, okay? But I'm bringing three. I'm bringing three years, but you only need one year. When you adjust the status to get the green card, that is when you need three years worth of tax returns. If you don't have a year, you write a letter of explanation. This is why I don't have my 2020 tax returns. Explanation. Immigration, just want to know why. But as long as you qualify on your last tax return, you're good. And you, can, if you don't quite meet the income requirements on a K-1 visa, you can use your assets, your house, your, you know, your bank account, your, you know, your personal assets you can use uh, to make up the difference, except for the Philippines. The Philippines, you cannot, unfortunately. So no, you don't, you don't have to have your last three years worth of tax returns, Mary Ann, only for the adjustment of status when you file for your green card. That is when you need three years worth of taxes. And uh, if you don't have three years worth, give an explanation, explain it. Did I hope that answered your question, guys. <clears throat> Every, you know, this K-1 visa process is, uh, it's an interesting thing. I'm it's just the second time I've been through it. And the first time was very quick. It was a six, seven months turnaround. This time we're in, you know, 12 months of waiting already. And we haven't got the NOA2 letter yet. And we haven't yet got the NVC welcome letter. And we haven't scheduled our interview at the embassy. So it's a longer time frame. But, uh, you know, I know how to do it. I've done it before. And the secret is to stay busy. Stay busy, stay busy, and be patient. Uh, you know, try not to try to refrain from calling USCIS on the phone and calling them up and saying, "Hey, hey, you know what? What's the status of my visa?" Because it slows down the process. So when it slows down the process, it, it, it's it's uh, slows it down for everybody else trying to get this thing done. Jacob. It's not illegal for my beneficiary to keep working right when here. No, when, you're, when your beneficiary gets to the United States, Jacob, and you guys get married, you, you have to adjust the status and wait for the green card. Or, you, you know, you can even work, uh, file for a, a work permit, an EAD, I believe it's called. But just wait for your green card. And then once you get your green card, once your beneficiary gets her green card, then she can go get a job. She'll get a social security number and she'll get a green card. And now it's and and USCIS will automatically notify the Social Security Administration that you guys got married. And then when they process your green card, they will also process your social security card at the same time to make it to, to streamline the process. Uh, Jacob, even if they remote work international in the Philippines, sure, she can do that. Sure, she can. You know, you, if your fiance has a job online where she can work uh, anywhere in the world, there is no law that says she cannot continue to work remotely um, <clears throat> for her company in the Philippines. As long as she pays her taxes to the Philippine government, the U.S. government doesn't care. Uh, so, yeah, Jacob, your fiance, once you guys get married, bring her to the USA. She can work remotely. <clears throat> That's no problem. Uh, hello, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking, Maciel Martinez. They received my request April 28th, 2022. NOA2 letter should be uh, next month, May, early June. Probably, probably the first week or second week of June, you'll get your NOA2 letter. All right. Um... The Jalal, I am really sad about denial, sir. I should reapply again or get married. Well, if you got a denial, you got to figure out why it was denied, what was the reason, and then you can easily get on a plane and go marry your fiance, go get married, and then file for an IR1 spousal visa or a CR1. Sp file for a spousal visa. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. 
okay? So don't be sad, be proactive, get on a plane, go fly to, to your beneficiary's home country, get married and then reapply for a spouse visa, okay? So, you know, you're get, and as long as your relationship is real, then that visa won't get denied, okay? Magley, do you have an idea of the timeline between filing for adjustment of status and getting the green card? It depends on which state you live in. I live in Florida. That's telling me 23 months. Folks who live in Nevada, it's 24, 25 months. Uh, but I'm seeing people in Facebook groups getting their green cards in six to eight months. So it depends on where you live. Uh, so it's kind of hard to answer that question. The, the, the most important though thing to do, though, is to apply for it. And then just wait out, wait it out, just wait. And then if the two years passes, in, and then you're going to get a letter of extension. They'll send you a letter of extension. Uh, if I get married, I apply for a CR1 or I-130. You apply for a CR1 visa. And then you, yes, you fill out, you apply for a spousal visa, CR1. Uh-huh. Is timeline for waiting case changes depend where I apply? I'm a resident in Qatar. Well, we love our friends in Qatar. It's a beautiful part of the world. And uh, I'm not sure how busy the U.S. Embassy is in Qatar. And I will investigate. So I will just be patient, okay? The secret is patience. James uh, McLean, USIS, stated they have a, good, a goal of reducing the wait time for K-1 visa to six months by October, 2023. What is your opinion? Will they meet that goal? October, 2023 is when the fiscal year starts for USCIS. Fiscal year 2024 is when they get more money. And I have, in my opinion, I believe that K-1 visas will be processed between six to eight months by October of 2023. Six to eight months. I agree. With If the director of USCIS says she can do that, then I will stand by her words and support her. Uh, the reason was we, okay, Deja, the reason your visa was denied because we didn't meet in the two years before applying. Okay. Well, you don't have to go and get married if that was the reason. What I would do is go meet with your fiance face to face, get on a plane Come back to the United States and then reapply for your K-1 visa, okay? And you will get a better outcome. You will probably get approved. You just have to write a little explanation in the uh, visa package that you were denied on the first time around because you didn't comply with the meeting physical requirements face-to-face. -face. Meet that requirement, my friend. Go to your go to the go to the country, get and meet up. Get all the pictures with the family and the friends. Get all the receipts that you guys were together, boarding passes, uh, stamps in your passport. Come back to the USA and reapply with all the stuff you submitted the first time, plus the proof that you guys met in person. Okay? So that's what I would do. Reapply the K-1 visa. And by the time you get that done, the process is going to be a lot quicker anyway because the things time the time is speeding up. Uh, is it true the culture is to call her esposa? Yeah, it's, you know, I call Karina my esposa, mi prometida. It's just in jest, okay? It's just affection. And uh, it's, 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 the way, it's the way it is. But, you know, it's nothing I can do about it. All I can do is wait and see what immigration says. And then I got letters of affidavit ready to go to, to prove that we're single. Uh, if I file taxes, Amanda, if said, asks, if I file taxes every year, but I owe money back and I'm on a payment plan, will that affect anything of them approving the K-1 visa? Now, USCIS probably won't be happy that you owe taxes to the U.S. government, okay? But if you have a payment plan going on where you are paying the government the money you owe them, then that's a positive and, uh, it shouldn't have a problem. It shouldn't have a bearing on your visa application. But if you can, find somebody to lend you the money and pay off the IRS what you owe them, 
So by the time you get to the immigration part, the face to face, that you don't owe the government any money. Just my opinion. Get it paid off as quick as you can. <clears throat> uh, so Amanda, try try and get that paid off, okay? You know, it, it may affect you. For, it it won't affect the K one visa process, but it may hurt at the uh, time comes for um, for citizenship. If you know, if you are a beneficiary and then you come to the United States, get married, and then that person applies for U.S. citizenship. If that person who is applying for U.S. citizenship owes taxes to the government, they probably won't give you citizenship until you've paid off your your taxes. But applying for a K-1 visa is not going to hurt anything if it's on the back of the sponsor, not the beneficiary. It'll hurt the beneficiary if he, she is the one that owes the money, not the sponsor. Uh, Edward Tubman Jr. Ha Diego, how long your papers? Spend it in the MVC. How long does this? Okay, I think the question is, how long does the paperwork sit at the MVC? Once you get your NOA2 letter, USIS, send it to the MVC, National Visa Center in New Hampshire. How long does it sit there? Well, it depends on which embassy that your K-1 visa needs to go to. If it has to go to Mexico or perhaps the Philippines, it might sit, it might sit a little bit longer at the MVC because they're waiting for a, a billet or, or time slot to open up or the workload to come down at the embassy. Depends on the embassy. You know, Bogota could be busy. The U.S. Embassy in Bogota could be busy. And my K-1 visa could sit at the MVC for a couple of months while they're waiting for the Bogota folks to get unbusy. It, it, all, it all depends. <clears throat> Kemani Young. Hola, Diego. Hola, como estas? What do you recommend about traveling back to your home country before getting a green card? Just in, uh, I don't recommend it. Once you get your green card in your hand, once your beneficiary has her green card, Stay in the USA until you get the 10-year green card. Remember, the first green card is a two-year probationary green card. It's a probationary. It's only good, it's good for two years. And after two years, you have to lift the conditions off that green card and turn it into a 10-year green card. So I do not recommend going back to the home country while on a probationary green card. You can if you get a, a you know, you can get a, a permission slip from the government to travel, but I don't recommend it. Just my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> I would just stay in the United States, okay? Uh, don't travel. Let's see. What do we got? LSV TV. Messiah, I also received a letter. Okay. Mohammed. Mohammed. Hey, Diego, how can I request to expedite my K-1 visa if I get denied? Is that going to affect the waiting time? Well, number one, expediting a K-1 visa is nine times out of ten it's going to get denied. The, the expedite is going to get denied because unless somebody is really sick or dying on the sidewalk, they're bleeding on the sidewalk because they're sick, they got hurt. OK, or there's a, a real emergency, a medical emergency, an expedite is going to get denied. Immigration, don't they, they just don't have to. They want everybody to basically get in line and wait their turn. OK. And they understand everybody's impatient and they want to be with their family. We I, I want to be with Karina. I miss her terribly. But there's a process. Uh, but it won't if you if you file an expedite and the expedite gets denied, it won't affect your K-1 visa processing. No, the process will continue as normal. Everything will continue as normal. You're still in the queue waiting your turn to get adjudicated. <clears throat> uh, Diego, is the NOA the same as the approval letter? Yeah, NOA 2. The NOA 2 letter is the approval letter. The NOA 2 letter is the approval for your visa. It's gold. Don't lose that letter, okay? Uh, hello, LSV. Okay, so Messiah is talking to LSV. That's good. Jacob, is the Philippines backlog so high because they were closed long after everyone else opened up from COVID? Yep, they sure were. And that wasn't really the fault of the U.S. government. The Philippine government basically shut down the whole 
country, Americans, tourists, and it cost it cost the Philippines billions of dollars in tourist revenue. But when the Philippine government closed the doors to everybody, that basically created the massive backlog at the embassy. And then the embassy, they shut down too. So everybody was shutting down. I think the only place in the world that didn't shut down was Florida. During COVID, we didn't shut down. Gyms stayed open, stores stayed open, hospitals stayed open, life continued. But everything's every state's different, you know. Every government has their own way of doing things. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so Jacob, yeah, that's correct. Masayo Martinez, what he received was the NOA-1. Okay, NOA-1 is acknowledgement that they received the K-1 package and there was no mess-ups. The, the NOA-2 letter is the approval, okay, or the denial. Jacob, is it hard to get permission to travel because my family likes to visit family in Japan every, like, five years? And we are planning next year, me and my beneficiary will be able to attend. Okay. If... If you're, if you have just arrived in the United States, Miss Beneficiary from Japan, then you're going to probably skip this next five year family reunion. My recommendation is to stay in the USA so that you don't have any problems coming back, re entering the United States. You know, it's just my opinion. You can do a Skype family reunion this time around, and then when you get that 10-year green card, or even better yet, U.S. citizenship, then that's when you travel. Karina is already, I talk, Karina's family is all over South America, okay? She hasn't seen her mom in, what, five years? She's in Venezuela. And, and Karina knows when she gets to the USA, she ain't going anywhere, okay, until she gets her 10-year green card. And she's prepared for that, okay? It's difficult. It's tough on family separation. But once you're in the USA on your probationary green card, stay in the USA until you get your 10-year green card. And if it takes four years to get the 10-year green card, that I that so be it. This is, this is the process we're in, guys. Uh, but, you know, no, it's not hard to get permission to travel. But I wouldn't risk it, honestly. If you want to pay the pay for the travel documents, go right ahead. But I wouldn't do it. Mina, hi, I'm a Filipina. Komusta ka, Mina? Living in Hong Kong. Okay. My fiance and I just met for the first time recently and planning to file K1 next month. Can you give us some tips to make our case strong? Sure. Make sure that you have lots of pictures together with family and friends. Make sure that you both wrote letters of intent to get married and that the letters of intent to get married include the fact that you are a Filipino living in Hong Kong and that uh, you are legally free and able to marry and that you will do so within 90 days and your sponsor, your future husband, does the same thing. And uh, I've made videos about how to put together a strong K-1 visa package. I've got videos made out there. If you go and if I don't know if you're subscribed to the channel or not, I mean you don't have to to subscribe, but if you if you are a channel member, you may be easier for you to go in there and look and page through the videos. And about a, a month ago, I made a video on how to put together a strong K-1 visa package. I, it's much easier for me to make videos than to you know you know to to, to try to explain it here. In the amount of time we have here, there's a lot involved in putting together a K-1 visa package. But the, but evidence is the big key thing: boarding passes, uh, hotel hotel receipts um, with the name of your beneficiary on the name of, on the hotel receipt, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's all about proving a real relationship. Uh, even if they are from the Philippines and it's not to the Philippines, doesn't matter what country. Doesn't matter if it's Mexico, France, Belgium, Holland, South Korea, it doesn't matter. A two year green card is a probationary green card. And uh, it's, it's, it's created in such a way where they want you to stay in the USA until you get a 10 year green card. Okay, just my opinion don't travel on a two year green card. Don't do it. 
Uh, Sir Diego, can I trust again to reapply with my lawyer with my K-1 visa because we got denial with him? You don't need a lawyer, my friend. You don't need a lawyer to file a K-1 visa. And in fact, I don't want anybody touching my paperwork except for me. I trust Diego to file my visa package, not a lawyer who, who once he gets paid, all of a sudden I can't get a hold of him. You know, file your own K-1 visa. Don't, I mean, I'm not saying lawyers are bad or, or companies that create process visas are bad. I'm not saying that they're bad. But the only time you really need an attorney to file a K-1 visa is if you have a sketchy criminal record that you don't know if you're going to qualify for the visa or not. That's the only time you really need to use a lawyer, and a lawyer is going to look at it and say whether you qualify or not. But no, don't use an attorney. It's 13 pages. It's 13 page form. All you got to do is fill out a 13 page form. Make sure you put the passport numbers information in there, the, the date of birth properly. Make sure you sign and date the form and include all the evidence, and you're good to go. It's not difficult. Uh, it's not a matter of whether you can trust your lawyer. Your lawyer is, is probably a professional and knows exactly what he or she's doing. But in my personal opinion, it's a waste of money. Use that money for your for your honeymoon and for your airline airline tickets to go visit your beneficiary. And just because you got a denial because you didn't meet face to face, that that wasn't that wasn't a denial or that wasn't a block. That wasn't a block. That was just saying, hey, you didn't qualify because you didn't meet your beneficiary face to face. What you need to do is reapply without an attorney. OK, don't do it. Don't get an attorney. Just reapply. And I guarantee you get approved this time as long as you put together a good package. Uh, Harold. Hey, Diego, for Colombian women, it's the K-1 visa going, going moving faster. Well, you know, whether it's a Colombia or whether it's Ecuador, Peru, Chile, Argentina, depends on the embassy. Doesn't matter. USCIS don't care what the nationality is of the, of the person. If they've got a K-1 visa for a Ukrainian and a Russian, they're going to get treated equally in the process. But obviously the embassy in Moscow has been closed and the embassy in Ukraine is operating at a minimal level. So everybody has to go to Poland or some other country. If you're from Russia or from Ukraine, the U.S. government is not going to stop you from getting the K-1 visa. Or if you're from Colombia or from Ecuador. So to answer your question, it depends how busy is the embassy and what hoops do you have to jump through to get to that embassy? OK, so for Colombian women, the, the process is moving just as fast as for somebody from Japan or from from uh, Ecuador, or Peru, or Argentina, or Brazil. Uh, James McLean, will you make a video tutorial and walk us through step-by-step -step on how to fill out the K-1 visa application? I can do that. All right, James, I'll do that. Uh, Jacob, what's the average time length for citizenship? Well, if your beneficiary is in a K-1 visa, She's marrying a U.S. citizen because you have to be a U.S. citizen to qualify to, for the benefit, to process the visa. And it takes three years from the date on the green card. Now, I'm going to make sure I don't make this mistake again. On the green card, there's an issue date. On your probationary green card, there's going to be an issue date. Three years from that day, you can apply for U.S. citizenship for your beneficiary. Or your beneficiary can apply for the citizenship. If he or she is married to a U.S. citizen, if he or she is not married to a U.S. citizen, uh, let's suppose and she brings her child over or her children, then her children uh, will have to wait. Uh, if they turn uh, over age 21, once they get their green card, they'll have to wait five years because they're not married to anybody. They're single. Uh, let's see here. Mina, I watched all your videos every day. I'm subscribed to you. I'm just worried that we just met once. Will it be a problem later? He met my family over video calls only. We plan to meet second time this year. Okay. Uh, have you? Okay, Mina, have you sub, have you submitted your K-1 visa package? Have you submitted it? Has it been submitted? I don't know. Okay, but if you but 
the law says you got to meet one time face to face with your beneficiary and hopefully you spend a lot of time together. Immigration are looking for a real relationship. You guys are in a real relationship, you'll be fine. But I highly recommend that you meet twice, not once. Go back a second time, and then when you get your NOA2 letter, go back a third time. So when you go to the face-to-face -face visa interview, the immigration officer is going to ask the beneficiary, uh, has your fiancé been back to see you since he filed the K-1 visa? And you can say, yeah, he's been to see me three times. Boom, you're good to go. Uh, let's see. Uh, we appreciate you, Mina, watching the videos. Okay, this is your channel. This is your YouTube channel. We're here for you. We're going to pull you over the finish line, okay? We're going to get you through it. Uh, I, did y'all? I did, and I, and I pay him too much, unfortunately. Don't worry about it. Whatever you did in the past, forget about it. Focus on the future. Okay, don't pay your attorney anymore. Don't pay any more attorney fees. Put that money in the bank for your for your wedding, for your uh, beneficiary, uh, for your honeymoon, and then and then focus on going back to the home country, meeting face to face. And as soon as you get off the plane back in the United States, wait about a week, put together a strong K one visa package and send it. All right, boom, and you'll get it. You'll be fine. You'll get it this time. But don't forget to write a, le a letter of explanation why your first visa was denied. I didn't meet within the time frame required. Okay, no problem. You didn't know. Now you know. Now you're going to fix it. Uh, okay, hey, Diego did apply first time and I was approved but didn't work out. And I sent the second K1 for my second fiance. Is that okay? Tress or Salah? Not a problem, my friend. I'm on my second 1K1 visa, too. Now, U.S. immigration law and the Ember law, which was made in 2005, says you can have 2K1 visas, okay? You're allowed 2K1 visas. People, you know, things happen. My first K1 visa didn't work out. Okay, not a problem. She went back home to her home country. She's back, went to her back home with her family. She didn't like being in the USA, didn't want to learn how to drive, didn't like the hot weather, didn't, she was scared of hurricanes, blah, 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 went back home and, you know, we got the paperwork done, separated, divorced, done, boom. And then I waited, then you got to wait for two years. You can't just jump right back in there, boy. You got to wait two years before you can apply for a second one. Well, I waited uh, four years. And then I'm on my second K-1 visa. It's no problem. The law allows for it, okay? But a third one, you got to get a permission slip and a waiver. And it's likely you probably won't get a third one, but you will get a second one. When you filled out your, uh, I, your form I-129F, it says in there, are you a multiple filer? And you would have said no. You would have checked the box, no, I'm not a multiple filer, which you're not because it's your second one. A multiple filer is number three, and then that's when the problems come in. But you're good. You're good on two. Relax, man, my friend. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> so, Tressor, don't worry. You're allowed to, you're, you're going to be just fine. Amanda, do you know how long it's taking to get interviews in Juarez right now? It's taken a while, six months, maybe. It was a year. But now it's, a, it's not as long as a wait as it used to be a year ago. Jacob Myers, would we be able to take a cruise for our honeymoon, being the May country? Now, you can go on a cruise for your honeymoon, but your fiancé cannot leave the ship. Don't leave the ship. Don't do it. Because, number one, you don't have a green card. You don't have a travel document. Okay? And you can go on a cruise, but... When you check back off the cruise, you're going to have to come through immigration in the United States, and the immigration officer on the port of the port of entry is going to want to see a travel document. So my recommendation is, Jacob, do not go on a cruise for your honeymoon. Don't do that. Do not do that. It will cause you all kinds of problems. Uh, Art Finoski, any data on how many fiancés don't marry the sponsor and no return to their country? 
I don't know. I don't keep track of that. I keep track of, uh, you know, who's getting approved and how long is it taking? Uh, I don't know how many fiancés didn't marry their sponsor. If you if a, if a beneficiary comes to the United States and they don't get married to their sponsor within 90 days, they will be under deportation orders by Homeland Security. They will have a warrant out for their arrest. <laughs> and they'll be wanted by the Homeland Security and the Border Patrol. So, you know, when my, uh, when my first K-1 visa didn't work out, you know, I explained to her that. And uh, so we, I flew her back home. I got on a plane with her and I flew her back home, took her home and back to her mom. She was, she was okay. Mm, so I don't have any data. I'm sorry, my friend. Mina, not, not yet. We're planning to submit it next month, but our second meeting will be in September this year. He will be coming back here in Hong Kong. Okay. Here's what I recommend, Mina. I recommend that you submit your K-1 visa after the second face-to-face -face meeting, okay, in September. Now, I know that's difficult because you want to get this in, you want to get this visa in process. I know you do, but my recommendation is to wait till September, make the second trip face-to-face, -face, get all the evidence that you guys have been together twice, boarding passes, photos together with family and friends, um, get all that stuff and submit the visa package in October of this year. And by October, the turnaround will be so much faster than it is right now. And your visa will be so much stronger. Just my opinion. You do as you want to do as you, as you feel, but what I would do if that was me, I would wait. I didn't submit my K-1 visa package package for Karina until I had made two trips to Colombia. I made, I spent, I went for a two week vacation and stayed five weeks. And then I came back to the USA. Then I went back to Colombia and stayed with her for four months on vacation and then came back to the USA. And we've been dating for a year and I spent five months together with her. Then I submitted my K-1 visa package. Five months together, two trips and being together for a year. And now, you know, that's what I did. And that's, that's what I recommend. Okay. Two trips at a minimum is what I recommend, even though the law says one trip. If you want to have a real strong visa package, make two trips. Uh, so I wouldn't submit it next month. I mean, I would wait till October. Okay. New fiscal year, quicker turnaround time, and a stronger visa package. Uh, she did not go to the interview, but she did not come to America. Okay. Then... Just if you're on your second K-1 visa and she didn't come to America, oh, you're good to go. No problem. It's it's you just you still have you still got a K-1 visa approved. You still have to tell immigration about it because they have a record of it. They have a record of it. You still have to include it in your K-1 visa package. But it's not going to stop you from getting a, a second one. No. <clears throat> Jalal Kalua, USCIS gave us 30 days with options like appeal or AAO. Could I reapply for this 30 days or, or we meet again for the third time? Okay, you can spend 600 bucks on an appeal to USCIS. You're going to wait for three months or six months for the appeal process, and then they're going to come back and say, no, your appeal has been denied because you didn't meet face-to-face -face as required by congressional law. Here's what I recommend you do. Don't appeal it. Just say, yes, sir. I'm sorry. I didn't follow the rules. Get on a plane. Go meet her face to face for the third time. Come back to the USA and file your K-1 visa. Write another check and wait for the NOA-1 letter and then your NOA-2 letter. Don't appeal it. Appealing it when you didn't follow the rules, and I'm not saying it's your fault, but you didn't follow the rules, you're going to, immigration is going to be chomping up the bit because you're going to give them another 600 bucks to appeal it. And then they're going to come back and say no. And then you would have lost three to six months waiting for the appeal when you could already have gone to the country, got face to face with her, came back, filed the K-1 visa, and you're waiting for your K-1 visa. So I wouldn't appeal it. Just carry on smartly. Go meet her. 
and make it happen, my friend, okay? That's my opinion, and trust me. Uh, let's see here. No, don't appeal it. Uh, Marianne, my fiance and I spent about eight days together because I'm a college student. I had to be back in the US, USA for my schooling. Will there be a problem? No, you met each other. Now, have you been together for a year? How long have you been together? Have you been chatting and communicating with each other for a year? I would say at a minimum a year. LSV TV, I took three trips, three trips before applying. Perfect, perfect. RMTZ, would it be faster to wait until October or submit sooner the better? I hear that October, they will speed up the process. If you have uh, a week K-1 visa package, you don't, you've only met once, uh, you've only been together for a month, wait till October. Build The longer you're together, the better, right? The longer you're together, the more evidence you have you're together, the better it is for you on your visa. <clears throat> I would wait till October. Uh, Mina, thank you for that. I understand that's also my concern. I keep that in mind and just discuss it. Mina, wait until October before you file the visa package. Have three trips, three meetings together. Have have a strong visa package. St start process, you know, make copies of your chats and your screenshots, your chats, and build up a strong visa package. And in October, you'll get a six to seven month turnaround on your K-1 visa, not a 12 month. That's my, my best advice, okay? And you'll be thankful. Right now, you're going to be saying, well, i got to wait, i got to wait, okay? This is a waiting game. And I'd rather you wait now and be successful in October than to file now too early with not enough evidence and then get an RFEs, or you need to prove your evidence of this, evidence of that. Wait till October, three trips. Strong, strong uh, relationship, lots of evidence. You'll get approved quicker. Uh, let's see here. LSV visited five times total. Okay, that's good, Jacob. I did it after one trip because it's so costly. I hope we're good. I have the second month long trip in November. You're good, Jacob. If you got to, by the time you go to the face to face visa interview, visa interview at the embassy in Manila, you got to, I would recommend a minimum of two times that you visit it because of the, it's such a long way to fly. What is it? 24 hours in a plane and the price is like two grand for a plane ticket. Immigration understand. Uh, so you'll be fine. Uh, do you know how long it will take to get interviews in Liberia? Edward Tubman Jr. Interviews in Liberia are taken a, a couple of months because of the backlog from the COVID. So it's two to three months. I just made a video about that uh, and published it uh, a couple hours ago. Amanda Rose, hi, Diego. My fiance has a question for you about the K-1 visa process. We are waiting for our NOA2 April filers, so we'll be on your heels. Well, come on, Amanda. I can't wait for our NOA2 letter. So then you, I hope you get yours first. Then you can tell me you got yours. Amanda Rose B, his foreign passport was set to expire next month. Okay, no problem. He needs to renew it. Okay, so we had it renewed, and now it has a new number. No problem. That's fine. It's not a problem. That exact same thing happened to Karina's passport, okay? And uh, what you do is when you get to the DS-160, when you, when you fill out the DS-160 for the scheduling of the interview and for the application for the visa, you put in the new passport number and the new expiration date on the DS-160. Uh, right now, it doesn't matter. You, you got a photocopy of his passport. The passport expired while in the K-1 visa process, and no big deal. Renew the passport, which you did. Karina did the same thing, and she had a new number. You have a new number. When we fill out the DS-160 for her application, We'll put in the new number and the new passport expiration date. Piece of cake. No worries. Don't relax, okay? Uh, <clears throat> we haven't filed the DS-160 yet. That's good. Don't worry. You got you good. The <clears throat> your K-1 visa rests in the hands of the immigration officer at the embassy. The immigration officer in the embassy couldn't care less. 
about whether your passport has expired in the past. They don't care. They, they care on the day you go to the face-to-face -face interview that, that your beneficiary's passport is not expired unless you're from Venezuela. That's a different story. That your passport has not expired. Relax. He is good to go. Not a problem. Now, if he didn't renew his passport and had no passport, that's a problem. There's no K-1 visa without a passport. Okay, unless you're from Venezuela, that's another story. But you're, you guys relax. You're good. Uh, okay, Amanda, please. You're good. Uh, Diego, this is from Trestle. I did send my second K-1 some dates with you April, April 18th. Okay, brother. Jess, hi, Diego. I'm in the UK. Beautiful United Kingdom. Amazing to see you. I'm going to visit my USA sponsor in Arizona in July. Ooh, it's hot in July, GS. Ooh, you're going to be hot in July. Should he pay for my ticket? Uh, or is, yeah, if he's sure he can pay for your ticket. Why not? Also, when I start my K-1 in September 23, I'm grounded in UK from travel to USA. Uh, no, you're not grounded, GS, but I wouldn't advise it because, you know, once you're in a K-1 visa process, um, I recommend that, you know, your your sponsor, your U.S. citizen in Arizona, fiance, fly and come see you in England, in the United Kingdom. I go to see Karina. I fly back and forth to Colombia, okay, because <clears throat> it's a pain in the rear getting a B2, B1, B2 uh, visa, travel visa during the K-1 visa process. I'm not saying it's not possible. It, it is, but it's just... It's just much better that you hang out in the United Kingdom and wait for your K-1 visa to get adjudicated and have your sponsor come visit you, okay? So uh, thanks for watching us from the United Kingdom, GS, and uh, I want you to go eat some Jaffa cakes for me, okay? I, I love Jaffa cakes and fish and chips and pickled onions. And Although I didn't, I, I didn't like pickled eggs too much. I ate pickled onions. I couldn't eat the pickled eggs. I don't know why, but I, li I lived in England for, for a long time when I was a kid. Um, Dejal Karu, I trust you, sir. Well, I'm glad because I'm going to help you guys get your visas. I'm going to pull you over the finish line, get you in the United States so you guys can start your lives. I know how difficult it is and how stressful it is. Been there, done that, and I'm going through it again. And, uh, you know, I'm going to help you guys, okay? Uh Harold A., uh, Cecilia Gomez. Cecilia Gomez, will my case be faster if we don't have children or not married? Uh, well, if you get married, your K-1 visa will be nullified because you can't be married when you're applying for a K-1 visa, but it won't go any faster. No. If you, if you have children, if you get, Cecilia, if you get pregnant during this K-1 visa process, God bless you. No problem. Fantastic. A new baby. A baby for your family, but uh, and then when the baby's born, you have to register the birth at the uh, embassy in your home country, and then he will get or she will get automatic U.S. citizenship so long as your sponsor is a resident of the United States, which he or she is, what well, he is, and congratulations on the baby, but it will not speed up the process an inch. USCIS don't care if you're pregnant or not pregnant. Or if you have a baby or don't have a baby, you're going to be in that line with everybody else waiting your turn for your visa. But but you understand what I'm saying? Uh, let's see. So Cecilia, no. Gracias para preguntar. No proceso is no rapido. Uh, Harold, I went to visit my fiance one time in Colombia. Is that week for a package visiting one time only last year. Okay, well, get on a plane, Harold, and go visit her again. Colombia is just down the road. It's like going to Texas, right? It's like flying to Texas. It's just down the road. You could hitchhike it. Go visit her again. Uh, Amanda, fantastic. Thank you for confirming that. I'll be okay. Yeah, he's fine. Amanda, relax. He was nervous about it. No, don't be nervous. So I'll tell him we and we love your content, and we've been watching you all along. Well, we agree, We appreciate you watching, Amanda Rose. And re Amanda, remember, Karina's passport was from Venezuela, and it expired. The passport expired, and I'm having, and I'm like, oh, I'm having a heart attack. But then I said, wait a second, that this 
this I've been through this before. So we got her and we fixed it. Okay, we got her into Venezuela, renewed the passport, and now all the numbers don't match, all the expiration dates don't match, but it's no big deal because at the face-to-face -face interview, when you fill out the DS-160, that's all that matters, okay? That's all that matters. Uh, let's see. Let's suppose you put some stuff in your K-1 visa package and you think it's going to be a problem, and USCIS look at it, and they say, okay, well, I don't like this, I don't like that, but they're going to send it to the embassy or to the MVC. The MVC will look at it and, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that. But they'll send it to the embassy. Then the embassy will make the final decision, all right? But on an expired passport, that happens all the time. It happens all the time. There's probably thousands of passports that have expired in, in the, on the shelves in immigration at USCIS Service Center in California and Texas or wherever. They've expired because of this long wait time. Renew the passport, fill out the DS-160. This is my new passport number. This is the new expiration date. Boom. You turn in the passport to the consular officer. The K-1 visa gets put in there, and boom, you're done. Fantastic. So Celia Gomez, no marriage before. No, don't get married. No. If you're pregnant, okay, congratulations, but... If you get married, that it's going to mess up your K-1 visa package. It will get canceled out. Stay single. Have the baby. Get it registered at the embassy as a U.S. citizen. Fantastic. Uh, Jacob, thanks, Diego, for the live stream. It answered a lot of my worries. Time for me to talk to my fiance about all I learned. Have a great night. Jacob, good night, my friend. Glad to help you. Okay. <clears throat> GS, my boyfriend is in the USA. Is retired military. And he since told me there is an American Legion in London. Yeah, there's an American Legion in London. That's cool. You guys should go there and hang out and check it out. That would be a great night out for you guys. And, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I miss when Karina gets her U.S. citizenship years from now. Once, she, once we get through this nightmare, okay, once she becomes an American citizen, uh, we won't be able to go to Venezuela where her family is because of the, the, the political conditions there won't let me into Venezuela, but we're going to go to England and for a vacation. Uh, Diego, your videos are helpful. LSV TV, Liberian Stars View, thank you. We're here to help you. Uh, I could probably write the book on USCIS K-1 visas and spousal visas. Uh Dijal Krula, do you think when I reapply from a K-1, it will take a long time as my first wait? No, it's not going to take as long, okay? The first one, wait, you waited 17 and a half months because of the COVID. COVID's gone away, okay, as far as I know. So now the wait time, by the time you get done everything you got to do and reapply for your K-1 visa, you're going to probably be waiting for six, seven, eight months. Get it done, my friend. Um, GS, I hear you. Thank you. It's happy to do that. There you go. Mail me some Jaffa cakes. They get melted in the mail. Florida is so hot that it will sit in the post office and they will melt. But I appreciate that offer, GS. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jacob, what's the longest interview time period for Manila? Okay. I would say May is the longest wait time. Oh, I got an itch. May is the longest. If you're if you're if you're trying to schedule an interview in Manila in May, hang it up. It's a long wait time. Any other month, you'll be fine. Okay. Uh, Magley, my fiance didn't put my passport number when he filed the I one twenty nine F. I have it, and it's good for another ten years. Is it okay as long as I put my passport number in the DS one sixty? It's got to be in the DS-160. That is your application for your K-1 visa. Uh, Janiela James, do we get a letter from the embassy to give permission to fill out the DS-160? Yeah, you get a ready letter. You get a ready letter. Once, once the MVC, you go, you create an online account in the, in the consular electronic processing system called the SEAC. You go into the SEAC, and it's going to say your visa is in transit, or your visa is at the MVC still, waiting for the embassy to get on busy, uh, or it will say ready, 
Once you get to that point where it's ready, then you should be able to get in there and start processing the DS-160. But the DS-160 is only good for 30 days. So you got to make sure you can get an interview scheduled too, or else you're going to have to redo the DS-160 if 30 days pass. Uh, let's see. So the MVC will notify you, Janiella, when you can, in, in an email. Amanda Rose from, from JDeep and I both thank you so much. We're cheering for you. And Karina, let's see who gets to NOA 2 first. Then we'll celebrate. Okay, Amanda. I hope you get yours first, okay? Janiella, when is the I-134 submitted? When you go to the face-to-face -face visa interview, okay? Uh, GLK dog 01. If you have kids already with your fiance, does that matter? No, uh, no. If you have kids with your fiance, that means they're U.S. citizens. That's no problem. The only thing you got to worry about is your income level has to be you have to qualify for the number of folks in the household, which I'm sure you do. RMTZ, I plan to propose in July. Would it be okay to start paperwork early? Some of the paperwork is time stamped. I'm not sure if they will like that. Okay, when you fill out your US USCIS form I 129F, okay, they change the addition dates. They change it. They change it. They, they change it. Make sure you don't submit your K 1 visa package on expired paperwork. Because if you do, guess what? They'll send it back, refuse, not denied. You're good. You're not, they won't deny it. They'll refuse it. They're going to send it back to you. Uh, you didn't fill out the paperwork on the current edition. So make sure you check the right edition before you submit, you know, on the I-129F before you submit your paperwork. Okay, guys, I've been chatting for one hour and 30 minutes. I hope it was beneficial to you guys. And uh, I'm going to end this live stream and uh, go make, get something to eat. Quick uh, question here from GLK Doggo on what application is USCIS working on this month? They are working on March of 2022 and January and February and all those prior to March 2022. Okay, guys, time for me to, to log off. If you got any questions, uh, see you next Sunday. Okay, next Sunday at five o'clock, I'll be here ready to answer all your new questions. And thanks, Amanda Rose. I'm going to go eat. I think I'll make some, uh, I want to make something British. I'm sure I got something in the fridge I can cook up. See you guys later.